Hello there folks. This quick video today is going to show you how to trend digital I.O. like a uh, an analyzer. Something that shows like a digital spectrum analyzer. Um, so we're going to do in this example. We've got a graphite HMI and on this graphite HMI I've got a couple of I.O. cards connected to the back. If you haven't seen a graphite HMI yet, please uh, get hold of your local Red Lion representative. Tell them you want to see a graphite HMI. They're really cool. So on this one, I've got uh, the second card. I'm using the GMDIO14R. That's got a relay on it, R. And so on this particular program, if I go over here to data tags on the left, and you'll see I've got a folder here already. And in this folder, I happen to have a bunch of flag tags mapped to each one of those individual uh, input points. This card happens to have eight discrete inputs and six relay outputs on this guy. So just to show first of all that on the screen, make sure it's working. Remember I always like to show that. So I'll go over here to the left hand side and click display pages on the left and I'll go over here to the right and click data tags on the right and I'm just going to grab this folder of tags and put it on the screen here like this and let's go ahead and download this to our uh, HMI here. And once I download, if I open up the browser you'll see here once the card starts registering you'll see that I can turn on and off my discrete inputs now these are all syncing inputs so I tie them to the negative side and that uh, will give me an off signal as you see here so by default they're all on the on until I uh, take them to zero and then they go to the off state so I currently have a couple push buttons connected to input one and two if I go back here to Crimson, and let's say I want to show this on a data logger. So I'll go over here to the data logger section here. I'll create a very simple log file. Uh, the fastest we can log is once a second, so I'll change that to once a second. I'll make each file for this example hold 60 samples, and maybe I want this thing to have the last 10 minutes of data. Just for giggles, I'll do that. So once a second is the update rate here. Each file holds 60 samples and I got to retain at most 10. So after 10 minutes goes by, we will delete the oldest file with the next newest. If I go to the contents tab here, this is where you tell it what you want to log. And let's say for this example, maybe I want to look at input one. I'll just drag that over here. Maybe I want to look at input two as well. And how about if I want to look at output one and output two? I've got, at least I've got some logic running on output one here. And we'll show that off in a second. So this is just setting up the data logger. If I go over here to display pages, now on this page I'm going to put the trend viewer primitive so that we can actually see this data. So if I go over here to the right side and click primitives on the right side, if I go to the home directory, this is the main menu of all your primitives. In this case, if I come down to a category called system primitives, and in the system primitives over on the right hand side second row from the top there's a primitive called the trend viewer if I simply grab that guy and drag it out here like this I can place this on the screen like this and maybe I'll make it a little wider and I'm gonna get rid of this section here team we don't really need to see these anymore since we tested that already so I'll move this over here and make it just a little bigger I'm gonna leave a little bit of space on the side because I'll show you what I'm gonna do there on here now I'm going to go ahead and double click on this or right click and go to properties. And if I go to the options tab, I need to tell this data logger to get its information or this trend viewer I should say from the data log called log1, the only one we set up. So if I hit the pull down here I can choose log1. The viewer width means this overall distance by default will take four minutes uh, just by default rather than wait for that. I'll hit the pole down here and slide to the top and choose 30 seconds. You can always span out to uh, 6, 24 hours or 2 days or so forth, but I'm going to leave this at 30 seconds. That should take care of that. If I go to the format tab here for this example, I'm going to change the background color to black instead of gray. And one more thing I wanted to fix over here at options, down here where it says data, I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, uh, some major lines here and I'll give it a time axis of automatic just so you can see what happens. So let's go ahead and click the OK button and I'll go ahead and download this to my screen 
and let's take a look and see what happens guys so here's the web browser waiting for it to come up here and as you can see I'm uh, trending across here now all these inputs show up as on all the time so if I go turn one of them off you'll see that the red line goes down that's the number one probably off uh, the yellow is something else I got going on if I click the other one there's the green that happens to be the other channel and if I let go it goes up now here's a negative to this representation right now just in my opinion you see that they go from all the way down here all the way to the top I can't really tell what the channel is doing specifically so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have like between this line right here this be my input one channel maybe this one here be my uh, input two channel I'll make this be my output one and my output two we'll see something like that but I'd like to make it so that the changes between here and, and here it kind of focuses on this zone so to make that happen I'm gonna go back to data tags so I'll go to the left side go to data tags on the left side and I'm going to this example I'll click here on the folder I'm gonna create a numeric tag these are all flag tags because this is a discrete which is correct but in this case I'm gonna click the new button here by default and I'm gonna get a blue X which is a numeric tag and I'm gonna call this one input underscore status underscore one and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this tag here equal to this one watch this trick notice currently it's blue the X is blue here uh, because at this juncture um, I don't have it mapped to anything it's currently set to internal so I'm gonna go over here to the right side of crimson and on the right side I'm gonna click on input one right here and I'm gonna take this particular tag and I'm gonna simply drag and drop it right out here in the word source notice what happens when you did that it automatically went from blue to a yellow color right here that means it's a formula tag merely equal to this guy right here now if I plot this on my trend viewer currently it's gonna go between well zero and infinity because I don't have any limits set up on this guy so I'm gonna go here to the format tab and I'm gonna say the format on this is gonna be negative one to nine it's gonna sound weird negative one to nine that's a span of ten lines what I'm getting at here let me go back to my browser I've got ten of these markers going up here so this bottom line right here would represent negative one this would be zero one two three four five six seven eight nine is the top okay what I want to have happen is I want that channel that I just did to reside right in this spot right here okay so this is negative one here to zero by default that guy is going to go from zero to one it should take this location here so we'll leave this okay that looks good there go back here to the data tab I'm gonna try the smart duplicate here so I'm gonna click on this tag over here on the left and this button right here is called the smart duplicate I'm gonna click on that it's gonna go input two here but it didn't do it quite as smart as I wanted I wanted this to jump to input two so it didn't work so I will just manually make this happen I'll click right here okay now if I leave this by default right here the way it is these two tags are gonna be right on top of each other well I really want this one here to be offset by one so up here where it says input two you can either click in here a few times to where it lets you type or you can hit the pull down right here and hit the word general and that'll let you put your cursor in here I'm gonna add one to this value so now it's offset by one that should take care of showing off that guy I also would like to make another one of these that monitors my two outputs so I'm gonna I'll use the smart duplicate here boom and I'm gonna change this one now so the wording here is going to be called output status and I'll change the number three here to a one like so and this one's going to map to output one so I'll grab this guy and I'll drag it right there but this was no offset here this one's offset one this one I'm going to offset by two so I'll hit the pull down here to general and I'll 
we'll say plus two here. And then I'm going to do smart duplicate again on this guy to give me the next channel. Output status two. And now this one here, I'll click in here and I'll change this to a two. And this number here should go to a three. All right. Now if I go back to the data logger over here on the left, click on the data logger. Instead of looking at these numbers now, I'll delete these guys. I'm actually now wanting to look at these four. So I'll come over here and highlight these four, and I'll just drag them over here like this. Now they'll put them in this order on my screen. If I go to my display pages here, here's my page. Uh, that should be okay. I'm going to go ahead and save this to my hard drive, and let's go ahead and download it, and let's see what happens here, guys. Okay, go back to the web browser. So you can see the trends now, and if you look at the green, well, the lines, hopefully they're showing up on the browser here. You can see here if I take number one down, you'll see that it changes. I have some timer working here, so the relay goes on there. But you can see how that changes. Now, instead of this being kind of really the opposite I want it to be, I'm going to go back over here to data tags. And if I click on my input status, you may or may not know this, but if you were to not this symbol or invert it, that would show up correctly. So if I go up here, I can put my mouse in here and either I can choose the general or you can click a few times, but the shift in the number one key is the apostrophe or explanation point, I'm sorry, the explanation point will make that a not. I'm going to do that to all these guys. Do it like this. And then if I go over here to my display pages, that should show up here correctly. Go ahead and save it so you can see here. So now if I turn on one of my inputs here, you can hear the relay clicking and so forth. And of course, if I turn the other one here, you know what I did? I shouldn't have did, guys. Hold on, back up here. I don't need to do this on this because these work correctly. I apologize for that. Let me get rid of that. There. I wondered why those were up. All right, now we should have everything should be in the off state right now as it is. If I hold on my input one, you can see it trend across there. If I turn it off and then go hold on my input number two, you can see the green line trends across there. And the other logic I got running on here is if I hold on my input number one for more than five seconds, the first output should go on. And you can see that right there. And then if I continue holding it to 10 seconds, output two goes on and there it is. And then once I turn this off, all the outputs should go off. Perfect. Now, in my opinion, right now, the way this sits, there's no scale here. There's nothing telling me that this is input one, input two. So if you're really going to do this correctly, you really should put some kind of scale or something here on the side. Well, if I go back to my program, I need a way to basically count 10 individual increments across here so I can put some labels in. And normally when I teach a class, I will show you guys over on the right hand side, I'll go to primitives and I'll go into core primitives. And you often you'll see me use this thing here, this vertical scale here. Normally this would work okay, uh, and probably would in this case, but when you use this guy, uh, you, get, you get the numbers on the side, I'll drag it out here so you can see it. You get the numbers on the side and you'll see that the, uh, the line doesn't quite match up at the bottom. So. What I'm going to do, and I don't want the numbers, that's the other thing, I don't want the numbers here. So I'm going to delete that, I'll go by to my home directory of my primitives, and if I come down here to the legacy primitives, in the legacy primitives we have another one here called just the simple vertical scale. If I drag this guy out here like this, and I'll place it here, and I'll shrink it, I'll stretch it down, 
Remember, guys, if you ever want to just roll your mouse in, you can always roll in to focus on things. I'm going to kind of stretch it like this. I'll make sure it lines up with the top, maybe. But I want it to face the other way here. So what I'm going to do is I'll double click on this guy to bring up its properties. And right here, instead of it facing to the right, I'll choose facing to the left. And then click the OK button. And now if I did it correctly, I can't really tell if that's matched up, but it's pretty close. These should line up with the lines when I go to download this. So let's just test it real quick here. Perfect. So I can kind of tell that this is going to be input one, this is input two. Now that I got that working, I'll go back here to my program and simply I'll just go to the home directory of my primitives. I'll go into my core primitives. Step out here a little bit. Whoops. Maybe not quite that much. Slide over here. And I'll just grab the text box and I can basically type in here. This is going to be input one. Maybe I'll make this guy a little bigger. And then I'll just grab it and I'll just place it. I'm going to leave it like this. I'll put it right here. Then I'll copy it. Control V as in Victor to paste the next one. This one right here is going to be input number two. Control V as in Victor to the next one. I know that this one here should be output one. So if I just click in here. And then if I copy it, Control V as in Victor paste the last one right here like so. This one's going to be output number two. And then I'm going to change this chart here, get rid of some of the background color. So I'll double click on that, go to here, and if I change the background color here to be uh, just white like so, but the line needs to be more of a gray like that. Alright, let's test it and see what happens, folks. perfect and you know if you really want to get fancy you could make these be different colors and so forth but there you can see I can tell right away that's input number one I can tell here that output one goes high when that goes on for five seconds if I keep holding it down and so forth and you can kind of see that in there which is pretty cool looks like an old digital analyzer something I did back in the old days of college anyway uh, the key parts to this example is when you set up these status tags which are mapped to your or linked to your discrete inputs when you go to the format tab if you give it a range here that's going to be the range where that guy shows up over on the trend viewer primitive so that's just a quick way to show you how you can use the uh, data logger and make it look like a, uh, a, a uh, analyzer Anyway, hope that uh, works out for you. If you got any questions, uh, please let us know. Thanks a lot for taking a look at Redline HMI products. Have a great day. See you guys.